My name is Olivia Fryman and I'm the keeper of the Wellington Collection at Apsley House. These magnificent robes were worn by the first Duke of Wellington and his two sons, Arthur Marquess of Douro and Lord Charles Wellesley for the coronation of George IV in 1821. George IV was very interested in coronations of the past and he spent a great deal of time reading about past coronations. He chose to dress all those taking part in costumes that were inspired by late Tudor and early Stuart dress. So they had very elaborate decoration, puff shoulders, painting, that is strips of fabric decorated with braid. These were not costumes that would have been worn by civilians in the early 19th century, they were really almost like fancy dress. Parliament granted £238,000 for George IV's coronation. That was more than 23 times the amount spent on the coronation of his father, George III. George IV also chose to decorate Westminster Hall with furnishings in the Gothic style and with architectural details such as pillars, fretwork and an archway over the north door that was intended to look like a medieval castle. The king's own costumes were also incredibly magnificent and inspired by historic garments. He wore a mantle with a train that was eight metres long. It required eight pages to carry it, one of whom was Arthur Mox of Douro, Wellington's elder son. So while not outshining George IV, the Duke of Wellington's robes were also incredibly magnificent. He wore a crimson velvet mantle decorated with an ermine cape and collar. Underneath that, he wore an ivory silk doublet and trunks decorated with gold lace and braid. He also wore a coronet that he actually carried for most of the coronation. The peers of the realm actually only put on the coronet after the king had been crowned. The coronet was silver gilt with a red velvet cap and a gold tassel on the top. It has a trim of ermine around the head. The leather boots were worn by the first Duke when he rode his horse into Westminster Hall. They're made of white kid leather with this beautiful crimson silk top and rosettes. He also wore a pair of white leather gloves with silver gilt cuff fringes. The magnificent gold baton was given to Wellington by George IV when Prince Regent, following his victory at the Battle of Victoria in 1813, when he was made Field Marshal of the British Army. The baton is chased with a pattern of lions, roses, shamrocks and thistles, and the royal arms of England within the garter. On the top is the figure of St George slaying the dragon. Wellington was appointed as Lord High Constable, an ancient ceremonial office that was only used at coronations. He had a very prominent place in the procession from Westminster Hall to the Abbey. He was amongst the chain of officials who passed the regalia to the Archbishop of Canterbury who crowned the King. My name's Alex Seth Smith and I'm a, a senior textile conservator and we were brought in to work on the coronation robes to prepare them for display. Silk is notorious, it's known as the, um, the conservator's nightmare because it's not meant to last. This silk is already 200 years old, assuming it was new at the time that it was um, made into the trunks in 1821. The seat, particularly of the Lord Charles Wellesley trunks, it was very damaged. And the more you looked at it, you could see that the weave was just splitting. And it has to go onto a mannequin. And we have to consolidate the weak fabric as much as we can in order that it can withstand display. The right hand boot of the Duke of Wellington was in a, a very weak state and there is a seam that goes over the arch of the foot which was completely split and again it's fine leather, fine stitching over time, um, that whole seam had broken and we had to find a way to marry the top of the boot and rejoin that seam. We used tabs 
that we adhered to one side and then angled the boot together and then from the inside we're able to, to join it and fortunately it's held. At the coronation banquet, Wellington together with two other officials and a knight dressed in medieval style armour, who was called the King's Champion, they rode ahead of each course as it was served to the King's table. Interestingly, Wellington had to reverse his horse all the way out of the hall because of course you weren't allowed to turn your back on the monarch. So all of this was observed by the Duke of Wellington's wife Kitty, who had a seat in the Lord High Constable's box. Wellington was quite apprehensive about wearing his costume, but he wrote in a letter afterwards with evident relief. The ridicule which would have been occasioned by the individual costumes was shared by all, and people were so delighted with the general effect that everyone was consoled for the slight feeling of ridiculousness caused by his individual costume. Thank you.